<sighs> hey guys, it's your girl Tower Crush back with another review, and this time it is for Sisters on the ET. Sisters on the ET. Sisters on the ET. Sisters on the ET. Sisters on. No, okay. If you haven't already, hit my subscribe button. Thank you. And even if you don't want to subscribe, thank you for being here. I need you too. Okay, so I guess I get a little more excited on Wednesdays because this is slightly better than the album. And, you know, I get excited to do this review because I really do like these young ladies. So let's get right into it. So. Okay, so we let's just go first to the bank. Am I the only one that is like literally over? Like O V E R Maurice in the way he treats Sabrina. Like it is excessive and it's borderline abusive. Like I don't like it at all. Like she's not telling you nothing wrong, bruh. He put a gun to your head. He took everything you had and made you go to the bank to put your friend in danger. And you gonna tell her to be quiet? No, you are out of line. She need to fire you. She need to tell management that you back talking to this dude. That's what needs to happen. Sabrina, Sabrina, Sabrina. Tell on him. He is not your friend. Because guess what? Your friend would not put you in danger like that and still have the audacity to form his lips to say, he's a good person. He's a nice person. Nice people don't put guns in people's face. He wasn't scared at all. He was very pointed. He is gay for pay and you didn't want to pay. So he robbed you and wanted to rob the bank. Like, I don't, I just don't get it. Like what kind of toxic relationships is Tyler used to? Like you don't write no good non-toxic relationships. Like this is ridiculous. Huh? It's like, why would you have Q do all of that to him? If you was just going to have Q come right back in the picture, do that later. When the contract is up, do what the season when the contract is up. Not when you got seasons ahead because it don't make no sense and it makes Maurice look super weak. And I'm sorry, Maurice is a representation of a of that community on this on the you know on the platform. You can't do that. You can't do that because it's it's just not typical and it's not normal. Now moving along, Andy getting on my nerves talking about she filing for Gary, girl. Milk Dud is not going to change. He is going to try to continue to own you. Now, you probably will take him back because that's just who you are. Um, you're weak. Um, you don't make good decisions. Um, you cry a lot for no reason. Um, you're weak. Like, <laughs> I shouldn't be so mean to Andy, but, you know, I'm really kind of over it. Like, Tyler does this. He has these people go through extremes with, with cast members and then... We don't get to see them break up. Like people in their 30s, 20s and 30s are not breaking up with people when it's not working. Like you have to stay with a person for years. And that's just not true. That's not real. But that's what we keep having to look at. Like why I have to keep looking at Gary's big head self. I don't know. I don't know. But it looks like he ain't going nowhere no time soon. And they need to hurry up and bring Big Bird back because I'm sick of this. I am sick of this. I just say am. And he's taking too long to call. Like, why are you not keeping in contact with her? You got to keep her occupied and distracted from him. Uh, wait till you find out what he been doing. You're going to feel some type of way. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay, and so, Danny, at the, at the airport, why are you being so difficult with this man? One minute you act like you like him, the next minute you standing him up. I'm going to need you to make your mind up, honey. Like, that's a good man right there. Um, I don't understand why you even on the fence about him. Like, I really don't. Like, is it because he, he came on too strong? Um, I don't know. Because you can wind up going back with Preston, and that's what I really don't want for you. Because that ain't who you need either. Just my opinion. You know, so... Um, I don't, I don't understand it and I don't like it and I hope it goes away soon and she gives this man a chance. Um, you know, Q going to Maurice's house and then Calvin coming home. Okay, I didn't mind seeing Calvin this episode. He didn't get on my nerves because he said everything that was right. Like, and it was funny. It was like, give Q the phone. He just put it on speaker. Right, I ain't handing him nothing. He a thief. 
<laughs> he a thief. And no, I'm not going to watch your friend. What I'm about to do, this is what he should have said. I'm about to call the police on him. If he don't leave in the next two minutes, I'm calling 911. And Derek Cuter keeps sitting there. Like, why are you not calling 911 on him? I don't understand. Once my says, I didn't say he could come in. That is breaking and entering. You're going back to jail. I, I swear it's so simple. I swear it could all be so simple. No, they don't pay me to sing, but that is where I'm at right now. Q has no business being there, and Calvin should not have had to come home and see that. And then Q going to ask for his room. I thought you're trying to be with Maurice. Boy, you are full of crap. Dude, you're full of crap. And then we have Andy. Yeah, when she was talking to Fatima, y'all didn't notice that she, in the beginning, she was like, yeah, the lawyers are coming for me to sign the paperwork to sign, you know, to basically take the apartment. What paperwork was he talking about if she wasn't talking about the paper for, uh, paperwork for the apartment? And then when Fatima got ready to leave, she didn't change the mask. I'm like, I don't know. I had to think about it. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. You just said earlier, <laughs> who is organizing these things? <laughs> who is in charge of this? Because chronologically, it's wrong. It's just wrong. So, um, I don't know. I don't know exactly how... Um, what she's going to wind up doing because one minute she's signing papers, the next minute she don't know what she's going to do. But honestly, the lawyer should have been there because she said they was coming by for lunch to, for her to do this paperwork. Now, you going to talk to Danny for what? To, so Danny can tell you, you you should do it. Danny is not a good judge of character. She is not, not anybody you should be listening to because she is money hungry. So she's going to follow the dollars. And so if you listen to her, then you're basically saying, treat me how you will as long as you, you know, take care of me. Give me money. Shower me, shower me with expensive gifts. That is not any message to be sending out to any woman or any young lady. And it's very nerve wracking, might I add. And then we got Karen and Aaron. Like, Aaron, you just need to leave this heifer alone. She does not deserve you at all. You, she said there, cut you off, basically getting smart with you. But yeah, here you are. Yeah, I didn't answer, but you came anyway. You know what? <laughs> Honey, I tell you what. You go on, I'm going to leave you alone. I'm going to chuck up the deuces. But when you had that baby, I'm coming back for my DNA test because I don't believe you. You keep saying, you know it's not mine, but you don't know because you ain't been to the doctor and you don't know how far along you are. And we was back to back. She, Karen is, oh, she's getting on my nerves. And she's making me feel like she's not freaking pregnant. Because when you call for a doctor's appointment, they do they never say, we're going to try to get you in. We'll call you back. That never happens. They give you their next available appointment, even if it's five months down the line. That's what they do. So she's full of crap talking about they're going to fit me in somewhere. When? You should know when you're going to the doctor. I really don't know what you think you're about to get out of Zach. Because Zach is not about to be with you at all. Zach is madly in love with Fatima and for good reason. Now, Fatima sitting there tormenting um, Hayden was kind of hilarious, what can you say? <laughs> he was like, leave me alone, Fatima. Leave me alone. <laughs> that was like so funny. She trying to catch up to him and she going behind him. I'm like, leave him alone, Fatima. But yeah, he let her know that it ain't over and they ain't even. So that should put her on alarm right there. Like, what you mean we ain't over and we ain't even? Hmm. Because she ain't talked to her boo all day and she been calling him, leaving him messages. So it is just going to be for a matter of time before she realizes that he's locked up. And what's crazy, Zach told, oh boy, you need to call Fatima. How you ain't call Fatima? Talking about you was about to. Uh, how you call an attorney before you call Fatima? This is this man's life. This ain't your life. Who told you to call this guy? Gary? Like, seriously, and what are the charges? I don't like that. You could have told us what it was, Tyler. That was real petty of you. We need to know what's going on. <laughs> He's like, how is this even possible? What has what even possible? It's going to be some BS, I'm sure, but we're just going to have to see. But apparently, it might have something to do with the SEC because Fatima on the preview says, you know, call somebody and tells them they did. Like, why would you do that over the phone? Like, you be leaving all kind of paper trust for you to be so dope and uh, smart for Tina. You should be do moving wrong. 
You don't tell nobody you about to kill them. You just do it. I mean, not that I have any experience in killing somebody. I just know if I was, I'm not about to tell you so you can prepare yourself. I'm not about to tell you so you can prepare, prepare yourself to put me under. No, sir. No, ma'am. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm just going to show up. And Fatima always doing this. She's always doing that. And I just, mm -mm. I don't like the way she moves, but I do like the way she her clowns. That's kind of funny, but she needs to keep her plans to herself and just be about it. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Because that's, that action is what really matters at the end of the day, right or wrong. And so let's see. Karen coming back talking to Andy um, at the salon. I don't even know when Andy said she was going to see Karen. Maybe that was last week because I thought she was about to meet Danny. It's just weird. Um, it was just weird. And then let me let me not forget that Aaron was crying in the car. Like, boy, next time you go to see Karen, bring your bowels with you. <laughs> And it was weird because Pam was like, girl, is he out there crying in the car? How you see? Because when Karen walked outside, them blinds was shut. I'd be happy. I'd just be noticing stuff. And I'd be like, that don't, mm. I guess she got, she ain't no supersonic. She's super optic too. She can see through stuff. <laughs> I don't understand how does she know. How does she know? <laughs> So, you know, it was just, it, to me, it was an all-around good episode. I'm not mad at it um, for the series, in other words. Like, it's not like the best, oh, my God. But it was a good episode considering. I um, think that's about all I wanted to talk about outside of just the mentality of some of these characters. Like, to be Maurice, like, what is he really going through to keep making these decisions and to think that it's okay? I want to know why a Sabrina doesn't want to date a multimillionaire. Like, that was one thing Maurice said that was real. <laughs> he said, well, maybe if you date him, you'll stop wearing these raggedy in. Because <laughs> Sabrina dressed like, ugh. And she said her stuff be first. Where? You don't have no no shapes. You ain't doing no lines. It, it's just frumpy. If I was going to describe your style, honey, the one word would be frumpy. Aged. Because the clothing you wear makes you look 20 years older than you actually are. And you built real cute, honey. You need to show that. You need to get with makeup and, and, and wardrobe and tell them, uh-uh, I'm sick of y'all painting me like this. This is not cool. I don't have no siblings. Don't be making me no auntie just yet. <laughs> she said, I want to have some children first. But yeah, when the African comes in to talk to her, like, what is her problem? You're not going to ever be happy with Calvin because you're always going to question, you know, things. So you might as well date this guy. I mean, I don't know. I don't understand it. I think it's worth a date, if nothing else. If you can see yourself dating Calvin, who, who likes to shove him all the way up, then you can at least date this guy. Because if one account had $36 million in it, you can only imagine what the other accounts had in them. But I'm like, you know better than me, Sabrina. I, who am I to tell you what to do? I'm not anybody, and I'm not going to try to do that. So you do you, Sabrina. You do you. And I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> and again, if you haven't already, please hit my subscribe button. And I thank you for that. And um, I thank you all for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting me. And that is my $5.02. Peace.